Concerned about the critical state of the planet caused by climate change, association members of the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association in Mexico organized the SOS Save the Planet Conference in Jalapa, the capital city of the state of Veracruz, also known as the Athens of Veracruz. On March 6th, over 1,000 concerned jalapenos, government officials, and dignitaries attended the conference to join in the discussion on the latest issues and key solutions to mitigate the planet's climate crisis. Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously accepted the invitation as guest of honor to share her insights during the forum via video conference. Prominent guest speakers were the Honorable Fidel Herrera Beltran, Governor of Veracruz State, and His Honor David Velasco Chedraui, Mayor of Jalapa. Also present were Mariana Mungia de Velasco, President of Jalapa's Municipal Family Integral Development, or DIF. Mr. Ranulfo Marquez Hernandez, Civil Protection Secretary of the State. Mr. Victor Alvarado Martinez, Coordinator of the program Tu Decides, or You Decide. With the state's DIF, Mr. Elfredo Riveros Hernandez, Communication and Journalism Director of Radio Teocelo, Mr. Oscar Pedro Reyes Castellan, Journalist and President of El Centinela Newspaper, and Noman Jin, one of the most famous singer-songwriters in Mongolia. European Parliament Vice President, Mr. McMillan Scott, Senator Hejerson Alvarez from the Philippines, and legislator Tian Chiu Chin from Formosa or Taiwan also lent their support by sending their greeting messages to Supreme Master Ching Hai and the conference's participants. The SOS Save the Planet was broadcast live by the local station Oliva Radio on 95.5 FM. We now invite you to join us for the video conference with Supreme Master Ching Hai, SOS Save the Planet, held on March 6, 2009 in Jalapa, Mexico. En 1854, el jefe Sioux emite un mensaje en una de sus líneas, dice, Somos parte de la tierra y ella es parte de nosotros. Las flores perfumadas son nuestras hermanas. El ciervo, el caballo, el gran águila son nuestros hermanos. ¿Qué es el hombre sin los animales? Si todos los animales se fuesen, el hombre moriría de una gran soledad de espíritu. Los picos rocosos los surques húmedos de las campiñas, el calor del cuerpo del potro y el hombre, todos pertenecen a la misma familia. La tierra no pertenece al hombre, el hombre es el que pertenece a la tierra. Maestra querida, ¿qué hacer para que el hombre actual retome estos principios? Thank you again for reminding us this beautiful message. For humankind to live in peace and harmony with ourselves and nature, we don't really need so much effort. Just return to compassion and respect for all the life. That is the principle we must uphold to ensure that the animals do not disappear. Because as this chief describes, that would be tragic for us human too. Imagine our planet without animals at all. All the dogs gone, cats gone, birds gone, fish gone, buffaloes gone, elephants gone. Imagine none of the animals survive. How would we live? How would our life feel abundant? It will feel very dry and meaningless. So if we respect all life, then we also don't take any life. The earth provides in plenty for human and for animals. We don't need to take in a way that hurts or harms any other being. That means the animal-free diet again and again and again. If all humanity lives with the animal-free diet and live in respect to nature and other life, then we will have a heaven on earth. We'll pray for that day, Professor Lopez. Muchas gracias, Maestra. Gracias por tu amor y tus bendiciones. Thank you. Thank gracias. you, Master. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. 
Laura López, a teacher, has the next two questions. Laura, Hola, bienvenida. Hola, Master. Uh, welcome, Gusto I'm sorry. Verte. Hola. Yo tengo Hola. dos preguntas. Los profesores en las escuelas tienen una labor importante en el fomento de la conciencia ecológica. ¿Sus libros pueden ayudar en cada escuela a cada maestro? Very beautiful dress you wear. This uh, Mexico traditional dress, right? Sí, maestra. And uh, Professor Lopez before also wearing traditional Mexican, huh? I'm very happy, very glad. <laughs> Me siento muy, muy feliz. <laughs> uh, now, another Professor Lopez, Laura Lopez. <laughs> It is true that the teacher has an important job, very important job. An entire generation of young students can be inspired through one teacher's beneficial approach. The most correct way to teach the children is through the moral standard of spiritual way of living. Certainly, the ecological consciousness is a moral standard we must uphold for the survival of our planet. From this perspective, as to whether my books can help schools and teachers, perhaps they can. By showing the value of animals in our lives and their intelligence and their spiritual knowledge that they possess, and how we should cherish them for the intelligence and blessings they bring to our world. These blessings include their love, unconditional love, natural, pure love, which translates uh, to the moral value of no killing. If the children adopt these moral values of compassion from young age on, it will directly benefit our world. They will be living in the world of love and compassion, and hence, peaceful world. In addition, as vegetarians, they will be healthier and happier, smarter. Even their behavior will be more ideal for the society. Thank you, Professor Laura Lopez, <laughs> for your caring yeah. question. Thank you, Master. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing, a solution for world hunger. Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year, half the world's grain supply. Consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production. Reduces pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintains cleaner air. Saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year. Stop 80% of global warming, plus more. Save your life. Be veg. Go green. Una segunda pregunta y última. Sí, sí, sí. Recientemente usted habló del planeta Marte en su Primaster Television. Basada en su explicación que da sobre el planeta Marte, si esto ocurriera al nuestro, ¿quiénes se salvarían? Yes, who will be saved? Whom do you think? Professor, well, we hope that nothing happened to our planet. What I mean is not worse than what is happening now. Let's hope that we can stop the global warming and save our planet. The global warming on Mars was similar to ours right now. It came to the point of no return. We still have not reached the point of no return. We are near there. We are almost at the point of no return. But planet Mars at that time 
40 million years ago has reached the point of no return. It did begin with the gases from the livestock industry, animal rising, which then trigger other gases from the ocean and permafrost. Although the people there were warned, they did not uh, think it would happen. They did not also know about the vegetarian solution. They also thought that it will not happen so fast. Yes, that is why we continuously try right now to spread the solution message, vegetarian diet. It offers physical power to stop the global warming because it has a moral power. It has a scientific power, like like, attract like. We have to respect life, and then we will beget life. The solution is so simple. Be veg and go green. Be veg foremost. Go green, okay, we can take time. First be veg, and then take time to go green, because we have not scientifically developed enough to offer the fast solution of green living yet. I mean, we have some, but not complete. We have solar power, we have wind power, we have some uh, electrical cars, but it's not all over, it's not 100% complete. And even if we complete the green solution, it's not enough, because we don't just live with technical a solution. We have to live with moral standard. We have to live with our conscience. And scientifically speaking, like beget like. So we have to respect life. We have to live and let live. And then we will have life. So just be veg and save the planet. Go green later. <laughs> it's just a matter of enough people adopting the caring and ecological a lifestyle in time, in time, must be quick. We pray it will be so and quick. And we're working toward that goal with every means possible, from the Supreme Master television to media, advertisement to government, correspondence to individuals uh, going on the street and distributing flyers, information, etc., etc. As to your question about who will be saved, the one who has virtue, the one who lives according to universal law of compassion and love, the one who lives according to scientific law, like beget like. Yes, those will be saved. So living in virtue is the only protection. That is, living in goodness toward others, which is translated into action, the vegetarian diet. No killing other beings. Keep the animal-free diet and be kind to all co-inhabitants, of course, including the animals. These virtues will be smiled upon by heaven, and we will be protected. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you maestra. maestra. Muchas gracias por tus palabras de sabiduría. Gracias. También. <laughs> Querida maestra, de acuerdo con tu libro Los nobles animales silvestres, usted ha revelado información sobre los animales que nunca pensamos pudiera existir. ¿Cuál sería su mensaje para que la gente descubra y pueda tener una comunicación interna con los animales y respete su vida y hábitat? I like your dress. <laughs> gracias, maestra. Me gusta mucho. Oh, gracias. <laughs> Me gusta mucho. As uh, Mexican, huh? <laughs> sí, de, de algún lugar de aquí de Veracruz, sí. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Maybe, as you can see from uh, the animals in my book, the uh, internal communication comes through love, pure love, devotional love, unconditional love. When you love an animal truly, he or she will communicate with you 
in one way or another, because that is the trust that you build through your love, mutual love. The animal would know your love, just like you know the animals love you. If you have a dog, you know he loves you, <laughs> and the dogs know you love him. But more important is that we don't eat the flesh of any animal. Some persons who have experience with animals say that they are very sensitive to people. Uh, they would know who is good, who is not good for them. They sense it, and they run away from us if we emit some kind of a violent thought or like uh, harming them thought, then they run away. Uh, for example, uh, through research, uh, people say that the donkey, which is naturally vegetarian, can tell through their smell if the person is a meat eater or not. If the person is meat eater, he's very edgy and nervous, but if a person is a vegetarian, the donkey feels immediately more relaxed and safe and friendly. Many animals are like this, so the best thing for communicating with the animals is to refrain from harming them, to refrain from consuming their flesh. Then they will trust you and you can hear more clearly what they have to say. This also is the way to show the greatest love and respect for life. By not consuming animal products anymore, all the animals know that we consider their existence to be as important as our own and for the survival of the planet. They will bless us also. They will bless us to protect our lives and the planet. They came here with the blessing to help us, to bless us, but it's a pity that we kill our helpers and friends. If we have respect for their lives, then we will have the best chance to show them that we are worthy to be their friend. And the inner connection and communication will begin from here. Very simple. And heaven will bless us also beyond our imagination. Thank you. Gracias, Maestra. Thank you, Maestra. Sí, Maestra, tengo otra pregunta. ¿Cuál es el mensaje que sus mascotas y las aves silvestres nos envían a todos los seres humanos? The animals are very grateful to anyone who works to protect the environment and all lives, including their life. Hmm? They are very sensitive to this and they're very grateful. They appreciate all efforts to preserve their existence and the environment. The animals cherish existence, not for themselves, but because they want to continue to bless our world with their love and their spiritual quality and knowledge. There are many hero stories you can even read in the newspaper, on the television, radio, about the animals who risk and sometimes even sacrifice their lives to save humans. The animals do this gladly, willingly, because of their true love, the greatness of their heart. Yeah, their true love and the greatness of their heart. Recently, someone told me, uh, to my surprise, that the psychics communicator to animals received telepathic message from uh, one of my birds named Lumino and asked if the bird has any message to share. She conveyed this. We are here to evolve the world, to live up the world. And the more people that are aware of this, the greater the possibility of it. Our journey is to help as many beings on the planet as possible to experience this. So you can see that many of the animals are very pure. They don't think of themselves at all, only us. Even though they have suffered so much at the hands of us humans, they still love us. They still want to help us. What forgiveness, hey? Yes, yes. Thank you. I hope you are happy with my answer. Thank you, Master. Sí, qué hermoso saberlo, Maestra. Thank It's you. so beautiful to know that. 
Tengo otra pregunta. Querida maestra, si hubiera una catástrofe en el mundo, ¿cree que viniera gente de otros planetas a ayudarnos? First of all, we really wish it doesn't come to that. I wish that we have no catastrophe. I wish that we will be able to save the planet with the one and simple and the most effective solution that is the vegan diet. No animal diet, animal free lifestyle. I wish we can turn everything around on this beautiful planet and through the development of our own nobility, make the world a place almost like a paradise so that people from all the planets feel safe to visit us right now. Even if they have a helpful intention, what can they do for us? We human must change first to become more loving and more kind. Such a godly consciousness cannot be imposed. It must be desired and awakened within each individual. So the most important thing is for us to be virtuous, that we do not kill or practice any cruelty toward any other human and any animals, and be kind to our environment. This is the animal-free lifestyle, a violent-free lifestyle, peaceful lifestyle. Once there are enough people with this compassionate quality, our planet will become a place of kindness, where even other beings from all the world want to come to visit. They will come to visit if our planetary consciousness and moral standard match their own, match other planetary beings. Because right now, if they come to help us, maybe they look a little different. Maybe they speak a little different accent. Maybe we will not believe that they come to help us. Maybe they will endanger themselves before they could even help us. So we got to help ourselves. Simple, straightforward, easy. Just be veg. <laughs> Thank you. The next two questions are from Elfego Riveros, the director of radio, Teocelo Radio Station. Eh, Mr. Rivero, welcome. Hola. Hola, sir. Buenas noches, maestra. Buenas noches. Tengo dos preguntas, gracias. Sí, por favor. Maestra, considerando que el calentamiento global es resultado de múltiples factores, ¿cómo cree usted que sería posible diseñar y estructurar un plan integral de contingencias que desde los gobiernos locales, las empresas, la academia, los medios de comunicación, las escuelas y también las organizaciones ciudadanas ayuden a mitigar el daño provocado al medio ambiente? ¿O acaso nos tenemos que conformar con que solo es posible pensar en hacer cada uno lo que pueda sin contar con instrumentos de medición, ni estándares, ni políticas públicas que nos obliguen a todos por igual a preservar aire, agua y tierra. Mr. Riveros, you're right. We must have a plan. Yes, that's a very, very intelligent question. You are a journalist. <laughs> Good. <laughs> As you are a media professional, You understand the importance of a clear message and a simple set of principles to help people take actions that will lead to the worthy goal. So, we have such a plan of action for saving the planet, and it is very simple and straightforward. First, if nothing else, be vegetarian. Be veg, go green, and do good deeds. Good deeds, namely, for the government's leadership We have to ban meat and animal cruelty and publicize the vegetarian message everywhere. For the media, all the media should help with daily message of be veg, go green, save the planet, 
and give the public plenty of information about how to do that. That was the two solution for individual is vegetarian for government have to ban meat and publicize vegetarian diet. The same with the media have to publish all the information concerning meat harm and vegetarian benefit. Number three solution is the subsidies for organic farming. All farmers who turn to vegetarian organic farming instead of cattle rising should be subsidized from the government, which is good for the people and the environment. The subsidy should be given generously. Number four, a solution is we plant vegetables and trees. Everyone can plant vegetables to eat themselves in the garden or in the government empty plot, uh, anywhere possible, or plant it together. Yes, and we have to plant trees to prevent dry climate and attract the rain and to keep the soil not to be eroded. Number five solution is be frugal, live sustainably, adopt green practices with a focus on helping and sharing with others, such as carpooling, shopping together, gardening together, etc. Number six, spread the news, write to the government, write to the media, Inform political leaders of global warming and vegetarian solution and your desire to save the planet. Your desire for the government to help save the planet. Hold grassroots seminars, offer evidence and information to the public about the solution to global warming. Join efforts with other vegetarians by all working together the fruits of labor are multiplied and the planet can be saved. Number seven, meditate and pray. Repent all the harm that humanity has done. Pray for heaven's grace and forgiveness. All other things that I have mentioned, if we can do it all, is good. If not for the individual citizen, just be vegetarian than everything else will become clear and the planet will be safe. That is the most effective and fastest way to save our planet. Vegetarian diet, animal-free diet. Hopefully this is helpful, Mr. Riveros. We can give you this and other supporting materials if you desire. Or you can visit uh, www.suprememastertv.com. Thank you for your love for our planet. Thank you, Master. <laughs> European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Roll call vote. Vote is now open. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. My name is Jens Holm. I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please, be veg, go green, save the planet. La segunda pregunta, maestra, ¿por qué cree usted que los gobiernos subsidian de forma desordenada a las empresas, muchas veces con el pretexto de estimular la producción y crear empleos, pero sin antes certificar que se trate de actividades que no van a dañar el medio ambiente? ¿Y por qué los tomadores de decisiones no asumen su papel? promoviendo políticas públicas que ayuden a salvar el planeta. Porque, como usted dijo, ser líder quiere decir evitar el mal a la gente. I don't know, Mr. Riveros, I don't know why. <laughs> But you are right. 
the best government should promote policies which benefit the ordinary people and all people. To be effective, governments now must realize that this is a special, special situation, one that requires exceptional measures. I suggest all world leaders and governments to please promote the animal-free lifestyle and quick so that we can save our planet. We have no time, not too much time left. This is no longer even about politics. It's about survival of ourselves and our children. If all governments encourage people toward the healthy animal-free diet, the planet could be saved in no time. And the activities that are good for our earth can also generate livelihoods. We have a shortage of food, so the government can easily support organic vegan farmers and the advancement of other green practices. This will help greatly. The government must make a priority. Saving the planet. Organic farming subsidized. Thank you, sir. Gracias, maestra. Le apreciamos sus respuestas y uh, alabamos su actitud. Gracias. Gracias también. Thank you, Mr. Felber. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Very intelligent question. Muy inteligente preguntas. Thank you, Master. The next two questions come from Emma Curi Galvan, the Connelly Home Director. Welcome. Bienvenidos. Buenas noches. Soy Ana Cecilia Cervantes Chacón, en representación de Emma Curi Galvan. Maestra, buenas noches. Eh, buenas noches. Le tengo dos preguntas, maestra. Eh, el, el programa de Conecali ya tiene marcado una alimentación balanceada en base a leche, carne y huevos. Mi pregunta es, ¿cómo se puede sustituir de tal manera que no sea incompleta y puedan llegar a desnutrirse si llegasen a cambiar la dieta de omnívora a vegetariana o vegana, maestro? You see, madam, milk and eggs can easily be replaced with even better nutrition than ever. Milk is truly not so nutritious as it might have seemed so or we might have been told, since scientists have found that cow's milk for humans is one of eight top allergens. Small children and adults can have allergic reaction even. Milk products have also been linked to many forms of cancer as well as disease that can be fatal, such as Crohn disease and listerosis. And even though people often believe that milk contains a lot of calcium, the digestion of milk often requires more calcium than it contains. So the calcium is actually removed from the body in order to digest the milk. In fact, countries that consume the most milk are the same ones that have the most osteoporosis and the weakest bones. So, <laughs> you see, evidence says different. Vegetarian sources of calcium, on the other hand, are equally plentiful and much more easily absorbed and healthier for the body. One quarter cup of sesame seeds, for example, contains more calcium than one cup of milk, and it doesn't even require the calcium from the body to digest. You see, when we drink milk, we lost calcium from the body. When we take sesame, we don't lose it. We just add more calcium to our body. See, eggs are also very unhealthy, being strongly linked to heart disease and circulatory problems such as high blood pressure because of their cholesterol level. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production. Swine flu. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus, blue tongue disease. E. coli. Salmonella. Bird flu mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility, 
Eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth. Uses up to 43% of the world's cereal. Uses up to 85% of the world's soy. Cause world hunger and wars. 80% cause of global warming. Plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Hysteria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance, plus more. The plant-based diet, on the other hand, is so much more fresh and easy on the conscience and on the body, as it causes no suffering to animals and no suffering to our health. So for the most compassionate, but also the most healthy and nutritious choice, the vegetarian diet, the plant-based diet, animal-free diet, is the best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Master. Sí, maestra. Gracias por amar a mi país y que es el suyo. ¿Qué proponen para los productores de ganado para cambiar de rubro sin llegar a ser afectados en su economía, maestra? That's a good question. That's a good question. Concerning question, and of course, is a very right question. You see. The livestock farmers can easily change to something like organic vegan farming, which will reduce 40% of the CO2 that exists on our planet right now. If all people, all the farmers and all the arable land on our planet turn into vegan farming method, then first immediately 40% of the CO2 will be absorbed by the farming method alone already, 40% of it. They already have the land already readily available and to switch to organic farming will restore the health of the soil, which has been depleted by conventional growing practices. Studies have even shown that organic farming method, besides using less energy and reducing carbon emissions, are more financially profitable than conventional ones. With the world food shortage continues to worsen, more people are going hungry every day. So if we just stop the animal raising practices and turn instead to growing organic vegan food for humans, everyone in the world will benefit and we can save our planet. If we don't feed all the corns and all the cereals and vegetables to the animals, all the food that we produce right now could feed Two billion people already. So there's not even worry about a food shortage. And then we have a better future, a better conscience. And our planet will have a bright future. If everyone turned to organic vegetarian diet and organic uh, vegan farming. Thank you for your concern. 
I Gracias, hope somebody maestra. is listening. <laughs> Thank you, Master. That concludes the question and answer session. Thank you, all of you, for organizing this and for inviting me. Thank you, all the audience. Thank you, all the government officials, the mayor, the media uh, members that have taken their time to come and share our concerns with the world. May God bless you all. May God bless Mexico and our world. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Master, thank you so much for answering all our questions. Your insightful responses have raised our awareness on the actions we must take in order to save our life and our planet, our home. We must be veg. Thank you. And uh, this is something that all of us can do immediately, right now, in our home reduce our meat consumption to save our planet. These we can do. Can we do it? Yes. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> yes. Can we try it today? Yes. We try. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, the audience. Thank you. That's very good. That's love in action. Even if it's gradually, little by little, we can do it. We can begin with one bite at a time and be beige to save the planet. Master, it will be a tremendous honor for us if you can give the closing comments for the SOS Save the Planet conference. Oh yes, I think I have spoken everything. But uh, in case you are not aware, can I make a big report about the effects of climate change in Mexico since it concerns all of your citizens. Can I do that? Sure, Master, sure, sure, please. This is a quick running report. This is, you can find it on internet and elsewhere. This is mostly concerning Mexico alone. Disappearing glacier, the glacier on the Itzachihua volcano in central Mexico lost 30 meters in six years. And the temperature of the glaciers is close to freezing, but it's not freezing. So uh, the temperature does not preserve the glacier. So the glacier on the Itzachihua Pico de Orizaba volcanoes. The glaciers there are expected to disappear in the next 10 or something years. You can look upon that from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. There's another one, eroding beaches. Hurricanes and rising seas are eroding beaches in at least five Mexican states, including Quintana Roo. Uh, Yucatan Peninsula, yes, home to Cancun and other famous tourist areas. And uh, Tamaulipas, Veracruz, and Tabasco on the Gulf of Mexico, you see? Sinaloa on the Pacific. And uh, the, some location of coastal resort in Mazatlan. These beach are eroding. Hurricane Wilma took much of the sand of Cancun's beaches. The government had spent 21 million U.S. dollars to restore the beach. But much of these efforts were undone by the non-stop erosion. Not that we could even repair the damage. The eroding beaches threatened the tourism industry, which employs 2 million people and is Mexico's third greatest source of foreign exchange. A report of the sea level rise found that 46.2% of Mexico Gulf Coast is at risk of rising sea levels. Coastal lakes, marshlands, and agricultural areas most at risk across central and southern portions of the Mexican Gulf of Mexico. And in Mexico, we experience more frequent and stronger hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea. 
power hurricanes have increased significantly in the past few decades. The U.S. National Center for Atmospheric Research have identified warming sea surface temperatures as the main uh, cause and correlated the warmer seas with global warming. Warmer water leads to more water evaporation, giving the storms more fuel to create stronger storms, which destroy some counties. Hurricane stands from October 4, 2005, visit seven Mexican states, leading to loss of homes, deaths, and some entire communities being wiped out completely. Over 100,000 people were sent to shelters. Fatalities were estimated at uh, 1,620, making stand the 29th deadliest Atlantic hurricane. August and September 2007, intensive 240 rainstorms come to northern state with rainfall 19% above historical average. In June and July 2008, the country was struck with 184 storms with rainfall exceeded the average by more than 50%. Hurricane Dean, August 21, 2007, made landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 5 with gusts of 200 miles per hour. It completely destroyed the town of Mahawal. The government's preparations and ample warnings uh, by forecasters is credited with saving life. Although its aftermath did bring fatalities, the storm brought rain all the way to the country's Pacific coast, including up to 200 millimeter in Jalisco and Nayarit. In September 2008, tropical depression Lowell landed in the states of Michoacan, Sonora, and Sinaloa, with almost 27,000 people affected by flooding who were rendered homeless. Tropical storm Marco landed in Veracruz during the first week of October 2008, caused flooding in the city with high winds and heavy rains in Veracruz and surrounding regions. Veracruz officials opened 200 shelters to accommodate the homeless people. Some 400,000 people were affected. That's almost half a million people. With 800 towns flooded by water level up to three meters. Hurricanes Norbert hit the Mexican peninsula in October 2008 with winds of 165 kilometers per hour. Hundreds of people were evacuated from their homes due to flooding. Now, droughts and desertification. Mexico experienced the worst drought in living memories during 1999, with five northwestern Mexican states having been declared disaster area. Drinking supplies dangerously low, and the area was turned into a fire-prone area in danger of fire. Mexico National Institute of Ecology states that between 50 to 70 percent of the nation is afflicted by some degree of drought. Uh, the Lema Chapala Santiago River Basin is one of the most significant water areas of Mexico, has lost 61% of its water drainage and 99.7% of the reservoirs. Usable water volume increased 142%, indicating the population centers, including Mexico City have been drawing too much water. The environmentalists are very concerned for the biodiversity of the region, which has historically been home to 7,000 species of plants, 170 
species of mammals and 525 bird species and 300 aquatic species. Rain-fed corn, maize, is the most important food crop for Mexicans and has been vulnerable to drought. In 2003, over 200,000 farmers were affected by climate change, most of which was drought related. Of course, that's due to climate change. 47% of Mexico has some degree of desertification, with 70% of the nation vulnerable. Between 700,000 to 900,000 Mexicans are estimated to leave their homes each year in search for better opportunities elsewhere maybe in the United States even. Popular state has been increased forest fires over the past few years. Rainfall decreased by 200 liters per square meter. Increase in average annual temperatures to 17.5 degrees Celsius. The winter temperatures are now also above normal. Rapid deforestation between 1980 and 2002 on the Puebla mountain, La Malinche, has decreased forest area by 5,355 square kilometers and is believed to have resulted in lower rainfall of up to 100 millimeters. By July 2007, the deforestation in Puebla led to landslide, burying and killing 32 passengers in a bus. Harbingers of global warming. We have dengue fever, which has historically been found at elevation below 1,000 meters in Mexico, has now spread up to 1,700 meters. 40% of Mexico's coral reefs are experiencing bleachings of both the eastern and western coast. Intensity of wildfires. Uh, Mexico has the worst fire season in recorded history in 1998, affecting 505,857 hectares during a drought bringing smoke across the border into Texas, where it triggered a statewide health alert. Now we even have extreme cold weather. Between October 2008 and February 2009, over 36 people in Mexico died due to extreme cold weather, with 22 of them having suffered from carbon monoxide poisoning from burning firewood and charcoal to warm themselves. The average temperatures in the north of Mexico during this cold spell were minus 5 degrees Celsius for four months. The Gulf of Mexico dead zone is created primarily by runoff from U.S. agriculture. So it's not uh, completely the fault of Mexicans, see. The Gulf of Mexico dead zone expected to increase. Oceanography Professor Stephen DiMarco of Texas A&M University, USA stated that the increased river runoff from recent flooding in the United States is likely to cause the Gulf of Mexico's 7,900 square mile dead zone to become even larger. It's already almost 8,000 square mile dead zone, and now it's going to increase larger. Dead zones are ocean areas that no longer contain enough oxygen to support marine life. River runoff laden with nitrates or farm fertilizers are a main cause of these oxygen-deprived areas. With this year's Gulf of Mexico zone expected to extend beyond 10,000 square miles. There are surely more terrible situations in Mexico that are not checked due to our carelessness 
in taking care of the environment and the global warming resulting thereof. I finished my report, but the damage is not finished here. Please do something for your country at least. Thank you so much for your patience and for sharing the concern with me for Mexico. God bless you. God bless and protect Mexico. Thank you. Thank you very much, Master. A few persons have a question. Sure. Sí, sí. Muy bien. Your Spanish is wonderful. What a wonderful surprise. I learn espresso. <laughs> Hello. Mi nombre, my name is Nitsin Tanairi Villegas Morales. Eh, bueno, Actualmente las personas han perdido mucha esperanza en, en proyectos como este, en proyectos como los que tiene la gran maestra. Eh, pregunto yo, ¿cómo recuperar esa confianza? ¿Cómo volver a creer si muchas veces nos han mentido, desgraciadamente? Eh, es algo maravilloso que ella esté haciendo esto, sin embargo, ¿cómo creer, cómo atraer a las personas? Y sobre todo, ¿cómo prometernos a nosotros mismos que sí se va a cumplir y que va a ser algo que nos va a llevar prácticamente a la salvación del planeta? ¡Qué lindos! <laughs> ¡Muchas lindas! <laughs> ¡Oh, thanks! ¡Muchas lindas! Understand, yes. Mm. Very good question, very good question. Thanks. ¿Buenas preguntas? ¿Sí? <laughs> <laughs> Sí. Muy inteligente. Yes. Ok. Uh, ok. Thanks. Ah, de nada. Sometimes people want to do good things, but they are not uh, strong enough themselves or they don't have enough strong support to realize what they promised. So now it's the best we don't wait for anybody to fulfill their promises, but we promise to ourselves quietly to save the planet. You do have hope. We still have hope, high hope to save the planet. We still have several more years to save the planet. But we are counting down the days. So if you don't expect people to fulfill their promise, you fulfill your promise. Yes, you just be vegetarian. And then you ask anybody who you know to be vegetarian with you. That's the most simple solution and the most effective to save the planet. According to scientific research, according to medical research, and according to all the religious advice. Vegetarianism in Religion The Baha'i Faith Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra Gaudai the most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints Christianity Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood, and if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, 
the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adilila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu Islam Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith Jainism A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been especially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Kritanga Judaism And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible Blood meaning flesh Sikhism Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure. The Supreme Path of Discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants, I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Si yo soy vegetariana, si conozco a personas vegetarianas, pero conozco a personas que no lo son o que no han adquirido esta vida, porque es realmente una vida, cómo atraerlas a ella y, y cómo decirles que, que sí va a ser verdad, porque muchas veces decimos, no, ¿para qué hago eso si no va a servir? Y perdemos la esperanza. ¿Cómo atraerlas? Wow, very intelligent kid. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks. La muchacha es uh, muy inteligente. <laughs> <laughs> very good Spanish, master. Gracias, muchacha. On the Supreme Master Television dot com, we have a lot of information, scientific evidence and research information. You can copy them, and then you uh, give it to the people. We just do our best. We have to give the information to them with evidence from scientific research. Then they will believe. And also from uh, uh, religious, also if if you like. Gracias. Uh, Gracias también. So very much. Thank you, Master. Thank you very much. Thank you for being vegetarian, kid. Bravo. <laughs> Bonita. Master, we have a question for one little boy. Yes. Uh, hi, what Master. Is- He's my son, and he wants to ask you something. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Bienvenido. ¿Para qué sirve esta conferencia? Uh-huh. <laughs> For everybody to realize how dangerous our situation is and to inform people the best, the fastest, and the most effective solution to save our lives and all other lives on this planet. So please go home and tell everybody what you heard from this conference. And if they become your friends, 
if they love you, they love their children, they will become vegan just to save the planet. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Master. Buenas preguntas. <laughs> we have the last question, Master. Good. Bueno. Uh, hello, my name is Jennifer, and I, I really appreciate your presence here. And I, I'm very happy to know persons like you who are in, uh, who take care about environment and people and animals because there's a lot of things that people don't care about, especially. And I'm sad to say that, but especially in Mexico, where we don't have a conscience for animals. But well, my question is that I am totally in favor of vegetarian diet. Thank you. And I am trying to be Thank one you. myself. Thank you. And uh, I just have a question. If we become vegetarian, we need more food, more veg to eat. How would we deal with the problem of genetically modified food? How to avoid the use of pesticides if we need more food, uh, vegetables to eat? How can we deal with that? Thank you, Master. As I have mentioned before, if we don't have animal rising, the food that we produce right now could feed two billion more people. The uh, food that we uh, use for animal rising could feed extra two billion people. Right now, we have uh, almost uh, one billion people hungry. So if we don't feed, if we don't keep rising animals, we even have enough food already, extra food. Not to talk about not enough food. And uh, genetically modified food is not very good for health. We don't need that. <laughs> if we don't rise anymore, we have enough food, extra, <laughs> for everybody, even to feed freely to the hungry people, free of charge, and still have one billion portion left over. And uh, organic farming yields plenty for food, and at the same time absorb. 40% of CO2, yes. So organic farming is good for everything and good for us and good for the farmers to have new job, good for our health, <laughs> yes, good for the planet. No need to worry about not having enough food. The reason we are short of food, yes, because we feed to the animals instead of humans and we deplete the soy, so that we cannot even plant better vegetables. The more we use chemical and pesticide, the worse the soy become. That is the problem. And the more we use, the more our health will be at risk. And the more the rivers and ocean will be depleted of oxygen, the more dead zones will be created. And the less food we have, and the shorter our lifespan. So, the more we use organic, natural farming method, the more food we have, the healthier we become, and the healthier the soil will become, and from then on, the soil will recover, and then we will have more and more abundance of food. Yes? Thank you. You can do research on that, on internet, on or the suprememastertv.com. We have a lot of evidence about that, and more explanation then I can give you in just uh, two minutes. Please log on to suprememastertv.com for more uh, detailed information that you need to know. Thank you for being concerned. Thank you, Master. And we want to thank you, our audience, for such an interesting and intelligent questions. Thank you for your wisdom and unconditional love as you work to elevate the nobility of all humankind. Your selfless example inspires all of us to be better human beings and strive harder to help our fellow brothers and sisters, human and animal alike. Everybody can be veg, okay? Please, very simple, easy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming. We want to thank Supreme Master for being here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for spending your time with us to learn more about what every one of us can do to protect and preserve our planet and our life. Be veg.
to save the planet, our only home. Like Supreme Master Ching Hai has said, it's the most effective and the result is immediate if we just be veg. We can do it. Yes, we can. Everyone, let's commit ourselves to doing our part to save the planet. Let's all say it together. Be veg, go green, save the planet. Be veg, go green, save the planet. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for your support. Si, sí, è possibile. <laughs> it, it's possible, yes, Master, of course. Thank it you, is. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Master, for your love. Adios. Adios, Master. Bye -bye. Thank you for your Spanish. We want to thank everyone, our guest speaker. You're so wonderful. Gracias por estar aquí. Agradecemos a todos nuestros amables invitados, nuestros gentiles y honorables invitados, y a toda nuestra audiencia. Muchísimas gracias. Salvemos el planeta. Empecemos hoy. Gracias. <laughs> Los quiero mucho. No tenía, eh, no tenía cuenta de, de que el reducir también la reducción de carne, ser más vegetariano, que veo que trata mucho esta conferencia, impactara tanto en el medio ambiente. Yo creo que sería importante que empezara, empezáramos nosotros como gobiernos a, a recibir más este tipo de información, porque esto es novedoso para nosotros. Ahorita que estábamos platicando con otros servidores públicos, pues también eh, no, no entendíamos bien por qué el ser vegetariano contribuía tanto al medio ambiente. Eh, yo creo que hay que empezar por eso, por tener ma una mayor información, que haya una mayor dif de difusión de este tipo de programas, entender más realmente dónde está el beneficio el ser más vegetariano o no. Le mandamos un saludo muy, muy afectuoso de parte del gobierno municipal de Jalapa, Estamos muy contentos que nos hayan considerado en esta importantísima videoconferencia a la capital del Estado. Para nosotros estamos de veras muy contentos, muy honrados que nos haya, se nos haya considerado. Y bueno, ahora que en esta charla, en esta plática, pues creo que todos nos hemos enriquecido mucho de sus conocimientos y seguiremos pues muy atentos a toda la información que nos siga ella proporcionando. Con mucho gusto. Entre mejor informados creo que estemos, vamos a poder mejor transmitir esta información a toda la gente que nos lo solicita, porque hay mucha gente altruista que está muy interesada en eh, ser difusores para los niños que a su vez serán eh, los que transmitan en sus hogares y sobre todo pues como madre de familia, como esposa, como ciudadana, eh, creo que entre más información tengamos este, vamos a enfrentar mejor esta situación. Bueno, yo creo que eh, tenemos que hacer conciencia de que la modernidad no tiene que estar peleado ¿no? con, con el cuidado para nuestro planeta. Muchas veces el, el sentirse a gusto con las cosas modernas no, no nos hacen pensar y visualizar que, que un, un momentito de placer o de comodidad o de disfrutar un producto o una situación está acabando con mucho tiempo. De, de, de supervivencia, entonces sobre todo que si no hacemos pues un stop eh, eh, nos vamos a arrepentir y eso es lo que no queremos. Eh, lo que estamos haciendo por ejemplo con la contaminación de gases sí influye, pero aparte de eso estamos deforestando para poder meter cada día más animales, entonces esto es causa-efecto, una estamos echando a perder la tierra, deforestándola y aparte de eso le estamos dando mayores gases. O sea que lo que nos está quitando un poco o nos está equilibrando, lo estamos quitando y eso realmente a la larga nos debe traer consecuencias graves. Y yo siento que tenemos que reflexionar, o cambiamos o nos acabamos, no hay de otra. 
tengo una niña de 4 cuatro, cuatro años, pero casi no come carne y cuando le doy carne de puerco no le gusta y yo no la obligo a que lo coma, o sea, pues no. Y sí veo que tiene tendencia más a lo vegetariano, a las semillas, al frijol, al arroz, a las lentejas. Sí, sí sería algo viable, algo mejor para evitar el calentamiento global. Sí, o sea, sí nos gustaría ser vegetarianos y ya estamos en ese proceso. Eh, yo creo que tomarle cariño a las cosas, porque así como un familiar merece cariño, un animal también lo merece. Entonces creo que al igual que una persona tiene derecho a vivir, un animal también lo tiene. Hay muchísimas conferencias de ecología, o se dice mucho, pero realmente es poca la gente que, que toma realmente manos en el asunto, que hace algo, ¿no? Y creo que la propuesta, si bien suena un poco para mí al principio no muy eh, común, es decir, volverse vegetariano, hay en el fondo toda una serie de estudios que realmente corroboran que el cambio a esta dieta realmente tiene unos efectos muy beneficiosos, no, no tan solo por la salud, que eso es un, un extra, Creo que una, una solución bastante efectiva tiene que ver yo creo, con la dieta, como lo ha dicho la, la maestra. Eh, y creo que algo positivo sería efectivamente, por ejemplo, no sé, soya para eh, suplir, no sé, la, la carne, ¿no? Hay una serie enorme de posibilidades que se pueden hacer. Y algo que a mí me llamó mucho la atención y que me pareció muy interesante es que poco salen las noticias. Eh, sobre todo las islas que están inundadas. El, el video que vimos, la verdad es, es increíble cuánta gente se ha eh, reubicado en otras zonas. Eso me, me pareció la verdad así como que algo que no tenía idea, ¿no? Y vemos, abro periódicos, internet y no me había enterado de algo tan importante como es. Eh, tengo una tendencia hacia el vegetarianismo y mucho empezó la verdad por salud, pero realmente ahora que veo esto, pues siento que el creo que voy a ser más vegetariano. No, sí, pues eh, muchísimas gracias por darnos esta oportunidad realmente de escuchar sus palabras y no solo su, esta actitud tan positiva que se nota claramente, bueno, en querer salvar a nuestra tierra, a nuestro planeta, sino también eh, muy agradecido por compartir con nosotros la, pues, su experiencia espiritual también y todo el mensaje que ya con eso eh, conlleva. Ser vegetariano... Eh, eh, Sé ecológico salva al planeta, ¿verdad? Realmente no sabía que la carne era la que contaminaba el 80% de a nuestro ambiente. Pues ahora es mejor ser vegetariano, ¿no? Yo dejaría el consumo de carne por salvar nuestro planeta. Y entonces, empezar desde un inicio a ser vegetariano. Que estamos a tiempo, como ella dice, de poder salvar este, tanto pues, nuestra vida como la de otros seres que habitan en ella, como son nuestros amigos, los animales, como ella dice, y es cierto, ¿no? Yo tengo una hija vegetariana y hoy es cuando la comprendo más. Sé vegetariano, sé ecológico, salva el planeta. Mira, lo principal que a mí me gustó y que me dejó sobre lo de ser vegetariano, o sea, ese tema a mí me impactó mucho porque la verdad sí estoy acostumbrado a comer así cosas, que, carne, o sea, pero ya dije que de ahora en adelante me voy a hacer vegetariano. ¡Soy vegetariano! We are facing a planetary emergency right now, so it's an honor for me to be a part of this event in Mexico, Jalapa. I truly believe that if the message, be veg, go green, save the planet, reaches out to humanity and the world uh, at large, then we can save the planet, we can make a big difference and we can li live in peace, harmony and um, unity. So I'm, I'm really honored. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supreme Master Ching Hai, and thank you all the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members in Mexico for organizing this event. Be veg, go green, save the planet. Hola, Maestra Ching Hai. Mucho gusto. Soy María Marta Rodríguez Pereira, originaria de Jalapa, Veracruz, México. Les agradezco a usted y a todos sus colaboradores 
el gran empeño que ponen para difundir la cultura vegetariana. La ciudad de Jalapa, Veracruz, se caracteriza por tener muchos maestros vegetarianos que nos han inculcado el amor hacia la naturaleza. Mil gracias por todos los esfuerzos que realizan. Yo creo que esta actividad es de no cansarse nunca, maestra, que Dios la ilumine, que las potenen a todos ustedes. Dios los bendiga, maestra, y muchas gracias a usted y a todos. Jalapa, Veracruz, los recibe con los brazos abiertos. Me pareció excelente. Pues como bióloga venía a ver cuestiones de alternativas para evitar el calentamiento global, pero fue una grata sorpresa encontrarme con que lo que se propone es precisamente que comamos cuestiones vegetarianas, ¿no? que nos vayamos más, porque en casa pues somos netamente vegetarianos, yo desde niña soy vegetariana, o yo no soporto la carne desde que era niña, ¿no? y acá este, llegamos y empecé a decir, ah, yo soy de aquí, eh, les inyectamos a los animales, los manipulamos, los maltratamos, los matamos, los crecemos en tres meses y todo eso a la larga o a la corta eh, tiene repercusiones en nosotros, ¿no? Eh, a las niñas les cambia el pelo, les cambia la voz, a los niños les empiezan a crecer senos porque todas las cuestiones químicas, agroquímicas que les metemos a lo que consumimos, sobre todo la carne, nos, a final de cuentas eh, se nos revierten en nuestro cuerpo, ¿no? Nos asimilamos en nuestro cuerpo. Yo siento que muy acuerdo con, lo que, con la problemática que es, pero sobre todo muy valiente. Por lo que decía ella también a la niña que preguntó, no es una pregunta muy valiente, es una propuesta muy valiente. No nos estamos dando cuenta que efectivamente con el estar consumiendo eh, productos animales eh, que criamos de una forma desmedida o que ensuciamos el medio ambiente con sus crianzas y todo esto, eh, estamos desintegrándonos del, nosotros nos salimos, desintegrándonos me refiero a des, eh, salirnos de la integración del, con el planeta, ¿no? Y además, si todo el mundo se extinguiera, eh, todos los, anima, los demás animales podrían sobrevivir sin nosotros, pero nosotros no, sin ellos y mucho menos sin las plantas, ¿no?